The invasion of Ukraine by Russia couldn't have come at a worse time, really. It coincided with some of the restrictions uh, due to the global pandemic being eased, and some seafarers were indeed enjoying shore leave and greater access to internet. Uh, they were contacting families, and of course, there were repatriations as crew change became easier. But the invasion made things exponentially more difficult. Instantly, some crews were separated, Russians and Ukrainians, uh, moved to different vessels or indeed sent home. And we started to hear stories of families being caught up in the fighting. One of the first ships we visited, uh, we spoke to a seafarer who had lost contact with his family in Mariupol. Uh, we didn't know what to say. Uh, at the time, we had some free SIM cards to give out to seafarers. And when we offered one, he said he didn't want a SIM card. He wanted a gun and a flak jacket and to see his family again. We found it really important to make no generalizations or any judgment. We deal with all seafarers the same, whoever they may be. And we've met Russian seafarers, especially the young, who are absolutely uh, livid about what their nation's done. And they feel as though they can never return home. One told me he'd moved his uh, small family uh, to Poland and hoped to rebuild a life there and he was struggling with the fact that he might not see his parents uh, for a very long time. We've also then met Ukrainian seafarers who have spoken of their support for the Russian invasion, uh, speaking about historic difficulties that have happened over many, many, many years, um, and uh, talking about their own identity. Climbing aboard a ship that comes alongside and speaking to the crew, hearing the truth of their lives, reminds us that we just have no answers but we do have time to listen, to listen to seafarers and to make them feel that they're being heard and somebody cares. And uh, we'll, as we did throughout the whole pandemic, continue to do that to help in any way practically possible.